Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. I'm going to walk you through a little something I'm working on with a client and it has to do with DHCP um, and something to do with uh, vendor class identifiers or some people will call them client IDs or client identifiers. Uh, they're called option 60, option 60 uh, and it's um, I guess it's, it becomes a little bit of a problem when you when you really don't understand how to get the right packet to identify it. So here we go. I've got a um, Cisco ATA. This could be a phone. This could be a webcam. This could be a printer. This could be a laptop. Doesn't matter. Uh, and one of the big confusing points I had with the client was how do I um, get that information um, the easiest, the quickest way. So here we go. You don't need a tap, you don't need a mirror, you don't need a, ta uh, a span port, you don't need any of that stuff. All you need to do is be on the same VLAN or subnet as that device. And then with that device, you can either release and renew, uh, disconnect, reconnect the Ethernet, power on, power off, that sort of thing. Whatever it takes to get that device to go out and do a DHCP discover. And that's the key, the DHCP discover. Because the DHCP discover uh, with, with most devices, 9 out of 10 devices, uh, are going to be broadcast based, you'll see the broadcast come out of the box. Now, because you're on the same VLAN or subnet, you will be able to capture the discover packet. That's all you need. That's it. As soon as you got the discover packet, you've got all the information you need. Uh, this trace is from a Cisco ATA, and this is my classic uh, boot up configuration baseline. So all I did was plug this ATA into a tap, turn it on, captured all the packets, and this would be one of those things that I would want to document as part of this. So in the discover packet, if we move down here, you'll see option 60 will come up. There it is, option 60, and it says it's Cisco SPA122. Okay, now this is the important part. When you, when you have this information, you, you're the network person, you might not be involved with defining the DHCP scope, for example. So when you work with that person, you would have to give them this option 60 information. They would define a scope or a range for that uh, class identifier 60. And then all of the ATAs, for, for example, would be in their own little subnet or range or scope. Um, sometimes the DHCP server will take it as ASCII. Right, so you would actually literally, they would type CISCO SP A122. Now, just be careful with a few things. One case sensitivity, and the second thing, obviously, there's a space here, right? So, depending on the DHCP server you use, you might have to put double quotes around everything, all that, those little nuances that come along with whatever DHCP server you happen to use. Now, the second point is sometimes you cannot give the uh, text, the ASCII. Uh, to the actual DHCP administrator. They want it in um, hex. Well, the nice thing about Wireshark is once you've highlighted this, you see it all in blue? Well, that's what happens on the left-hand side. So as I move this around, you'll see there's all the hex. So it's not that bad, right? You can even copy and paste, but it's not a lot of stuff. You can just literally type that out if you'd like or do a screen capture, whatever. So that's the option 60 stuff and that's how to get it so again just a little review you don't need a span you don't need a tap you don't need a mirror you, you don't need any of that stuff you just have to be on the same vlan or subnet broadcast domain as the device have it perform a dhcp discover you capture the packet and you are good to go um, i've also got another one here i did of my laptop and you can see uh, it's msft space 5.0 and that's uh, for my Microsoft Windows 8 workstation. Okay, so hope that helps. Have a good day. Bye for now.